The best assembly one I've ever known in Nye County, or District 36, Eddie Goodhart. Come on up here, Eddie. You're a, you're a tough act to follow here. Well, then again, he's been lecturing at Oxford and he's been on 67 different television shows. And I don't have that type of, uh, that type of shall I say, public ex speaking experience. But uh, I was uh, fortunate enough and blessed enough to be uh, a Nye County uh, elected assemblyman for uh, 2007, 2009, and 2011. And here in Nye County, especially, we run into these issues of federal overreach and the federal government overstepping their bounds and trampling upon our personal freedoms and private property rights, personal property rights. <coughs> Why does it happen in Nye County? Well, Nye County is 98.5% federally controlled. Think about that right now. If you had a hotel and you had a 200 room hotel, and they say you could probably rent out three rooms and the rest would be controlled by the federal government. And that's against the law. And that's, that, that violates the very foundation and creation of our state on the equal footing doctrine. Yeah, I'm well aware of that. Anyway, here in Nye County, with that 98.5% federal ownership, we are now truly living in what I call a federally occupied territory. I always say I live in a federally occupied territory of Nye. And if you're not part of big government, you are looked up as a nuisance, and you are looked up as an inconvenience. They ridicule you, they disparage you, they demean you, they ignore you. If you stand up and speak, now you're a nail that dares to stick out of the board. Now you become an enemy. An now they're gonna use the ratchets and apparatchiks and the levers of big government to come after you. All different sorts of ways. I saw what happened to Dennis Hoff when he decided to go and run for office. I saw what happened to the Fuentes family here when they decided to go ahead and create uh, a nice piece of uh, uh, oasis here and turn it into a vibrant, thriving church camp that was able to go ahead and show uh, disadvantaged uh, teenagers uh, experience nature. First of all, you come by, they, they kind of scratch their heads, they kind of, you see them kind of sticker and stuff, all of a sudden buildings start happening and people start coming and, well, the history of Ash Meadows also, we have to go back a little ways. Nye County also happened to be the birthplace of the Western Sagebrush Rebellion. Mm -hmm. For those of you that are familiar with the Western Freedom Lands Movement, Dick Carver lived up there in northern Nye County. Well, what happened there was a, a flood uh, washed out a road leading to a canyon that a lot of people depended upon to go back and forth out of the canyon. Well, the government was, had always been looking at kind of closing off access. So they said, well, we can't reopen the canyon until we do some studies. At that point in time, Dick Carver took the matters in his own hands. He hopped on a bulldozer and facing down armed federal officials, put the blade down and reopened the road into the canyon. And that happened decades ago and it landed him, not in jail, but on the cover of Time magazine. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. This is how, this is how much worse it is today than it was 20 or 30 years ago. We have lost so much ground in this, okay? Had Dick Carver done that, he would be in jail for decades. Okay, the Bundys just trying to get some horses and their cows back. And look how many uh, years, or how long, how many of these folks had to stay in prison for. So Nye County has a history. What's also unique about it is, guess who used to own this property two owners ago? Dick Carver. Dick Carver owned this very piece of property, sold it to a good friend of mine, Ron Matheny, on the condition that Ron would never sell it to a federal official, a federal <coughs> entity, and that whoever he sold it to would also agree not to sell it to a federal entity. So what happened here to Fuentes family, they looked at you know, creating their little patch of heaven out here. Brooks were brick, uh, uh, gurgling and stuff, and there was a pond out here. Uh, there was naturally sub-irrigated orchards. Streams were blowing out, flowing through. There was a baptismal pool. I mean, it was actually a very beautiful place. Well, over the years, uh, Ash Meadows has continued to expand. Even the land that used to be now BLM has been reclassified as now Fish and Wildlife Refuge land. Over the years, this place keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's called the Big Park Syndrome. They get a park and they keep on wanting to expand and push out the borders. 
Well, we saw a lot of people get bought out, a lot of people sold out. Now, the Fuentes is one of the few remaining private parcels of land in Ash Meadows, which used to be all privately owned, dating back to the Spring Meadows Ranch and the Capert family. 30, 40 years ago, once you drove through Desert Scrub, you would have see, uh, seen hundreds, if not thousands, of cows grazing. You would have seen melon fields, uh, cotton fields grazing. You would have seen a symbiotic relationship between man and nature. All the animals are trying to protect were there in abundance, even in the presence of a multi-mixed use of a rancher, farmer, husband, during the resources and creating opportunity for all animals and species all at the same time providing jobs, opportunity, and sustenance for mankind. That type of thinking has now gone out the window. Now it's if man's there, it's bad. Well, I talked to the people from 30, 40 years ago, they said there was a lot more wildlife 30 or 40 years ago than there is today. And now what happens too is they've taken out a lot of these dams, diversion ditches, channels. It used to be that uh, how they had built these dams and structures, flow structures, was if you had a big rain, they would capture the rainwater. Then slowly over time, they would let it out to sink in the earth. They let it uh, out slowly through concrete ditches to water the fields. Now we have big, violent pulses of water. Big rainstorm, nothing holds it back. Big pulses of water come through. It has taken away a good portion of the back west part of their property. There's now gullies, taller than my arm can stretch, where it used to be fertile, flat ground less than 10 years ago, just due to their they're uh, they're hunking around with what used to be well along the way how this started was uh, they had first come out with what's called the EIS according to NEPA National Environmental Policy Act you have to announce as a federal agency or even as a private entity anything that has substantial impact on nature you have to have what's called the environmental impact assessment then it went to an environmental impact statement well in that statement they showed a lot of different alternatives A B C and D well, nowhere in any of that work did it show that one of their proposed actions was to dig a ditch around this patch of uh, heaven, church camp, and redivert the water. That was not even listed as one of their alternatives, number one. Number two, when they did this, they impacted the flow waters of an interstate waterway. This water crosses into California. It's already been decided this is applicable underneath the Navigable Waters Act. They never got a U.S. Army Corps of Engineer permit. Number three, they failed to confer with Clark, with Nye County, with their with their uh, FEMA department, and get the necessary permits for that. They never got a permit from the Clean Waters Act (EPA) for ripping out wetland habitat. So they basically took the whole stack of books and rules that we have to live by, and just threw them right out the window, and they plunged right ahead. I was elected official, I said, well, hey, you know what, this is so egregious, this can't stand. Well, let's go ahead and get some people involved, I said, with attorneys. We got attorneys involved through, I think it was an MPRI, the Center for Justice and Constitutional Litigation. I think that's been, what, seven years now. And now we're blessed enough to have uh, another entity hand off the baton to, which is the Mount, uh, Rocky Mountain Legal State Foundation. The Rocky Mountain State Legal Foundation. And please give those folks a hand too. They're very well. I, I might have been I might have been a little bit naive. I thought, well these these violations are so egregious, this cannot stand. So I said we're gonna get good representation, we're gonna take them to court, we're gonna kick their butt. Well, then I learned that anything this happens, it's now you have to take it to a federal court of claims. And now you're dealing with federal judges. We all heard about activist judges. Yeah. Well, think about federal judges. When you're asking a federal judge who's getting paid by the federal government yeah. with a golden federal retirement parachute, getting these people to hold their fellow agencies, federal rogue agencies, to task and hold them accountable. It doesn't happen. And that's why, you know, after seven years, I'm... I'm very grateful for Mount, uh, Rocky Mountain State's Legal Foundation stepping in, but I thought, uh, when I was talking with Fuentes, I saw how the bunnies had utilized, I, I call it the grassroots power, I think we have to take this to the next level. We have to now get enough citizens involved 
to where now will they not only do the right thing because they'll feel pressure, enough pressure to do the right thing. They know what the right thing is. We just have to create enough of a ruckus to force them to do the right thing. And I thought to myself the other day, uh, I run a dairy down the road, I said, wouldn't it be kind of crazy if I took an excavator down here and instead of bulldozing open the... Uh, uh, yeah, I have to say that I had an employee that kind of got singles mixed up and just happened to read the Verna Waterway back to where it originally was. But, uh, yeah. but anyway, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that uh, at times uh, I don't let those crazy thoughts go too far. I'd, I'd probably be in jail too, you know, for even saying it. But. What I'm saying out here, though, is uh, when we look at the totality of the actions here in Nye County, and we see the federal agencies, we're in basically their their huge stronghold. They have 98 and a half percent of the ground, and they're coming for more. The 98 and a half percent is enough. I've been in Amargosa Valley since uh, 1996. I can truthfully tell you that the federal government owns more ground in Nye County, and the private person owns less ground than 20 years ago. They keep on buying ground, buying ground, forcing people off, taking control over it, burning them out. Uh, the little place right to the south of here, there used to be a nice homestead owned by Mr. Peterson. Peterson. They called it, they called the, the reservoir after Peterson Reservoir. Well, in 1997 in March, on a very windy day, we know how windy March and April is out here, and there was high wind warnings, they decided to do a control burn and started just south of his 160 acres. Well, later that day, I was coming over the hill from Pahrump and I saw a huge flow of smoke. That was Mr. Peterson's uh, uh, outfit all going up in smoke. And he was old, old. He went to Vegas and he was in his 80s and shortly thereafter, his heart was broke, he passed away. But uh, we've seen this happen too many times to say that it's all done completely on accident. I mean, no one could be that that crazy stupid, could they? I don't know. But the old saying is, you can't fix stupid, but you can sure hire it or vote it in office. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of these people, they're not accountable because they're not elected officials. And they have the power of DC and the army of attorneys to basically allow them to literally almost get away with murder. And. Uh, so I'm very excited to see all of you here today. We have a lot more we could get into on uh, the history of Ash Meadows, but uh, even for example, Devil's Hole, it's basically the same level it was 40 years ago when they drove Spring Meadows Ranch out of business. The whole premise was a declining, a declining in that water table would make the pupfish go extinct. Well, that that level has basically held relatively constant within an inch or two over the last 40 years. Well, why is it we read now after tens of millions of government dollars, government intervention, that we only have, I think the last count, 87 pupfish alive in its natural environment. Back in the day when they had the Spring Meadows Ranch, they numbered in the hundreds if not the thousands. So now after tens of millions of dollars in investment and natural habitat restoration and protection, we have less pupfish than we had 40 years ago. I call that a very bad return on investment. Yes. <laughs> as, my, as, as my old friend Tom Buco had once said, it says they're loving them damn things to death. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as a case in point, I think it was 2014, no, probably in, maybe 2004, we had a big, uh, big rain event over Devil's Hole and it blew a lot of their glasses, they had specimen jars, so blew them in the, uh, in the devil's hole. And the people at the refuge said, well, it didn't rain at the refuge center, so we never thought of checking devil's hole. And it killed half the fish. All those glass jars bobbing around, the little puffish got in there, and it killed half the fish in devil's hole. Oops. I guess that person only got a 10% raise that year. <laughs> and then to boot, how they monkey with nature, they have everything all walled off now. Big fences, barbed wire, cameras. It looks like a maximum security. I can only imagine how the pupfish feel. Well, we know how they're feeling. Their numbers are declining every year. Well, they said, well, now we have a problem where the, the bacteria and the moss, and it doesn't want to grow on the shelf. It used to grow real good, and that's what the puffish eat. 
Now that, that moss doesn't want to grow anymore. Well, what is that moss want to grow anymore? Well, we have to find a new product we can art artificially feed the pupfish to make up for the moss that's no longer growing. Well, why is the moss no longer growing? Well, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. With all this fencing, they blocked off the access, ingress, and egress of all the natural critters. Coyotes, bighorn sheep, all of nature's animals that when they drink, they might also urinate and defecate. That puts the nutrients in the water that give the nutrients for the bacteria and the moss to grow. So every action they have, they create three more problems. And so what I've seen with the, with the, with the Fuentes Ranch here, what they claim is necessary to help a species or to save a species in all likelihood is nothing more than a retaliatory measure because they lowball them on a price on this camp and the point that says, no, we, we, we like our camp. But wasn't that far after afterwards, that's when the, the big earth moving equipment came to completely obliterate the water paths and channels that used to come through this camp. So. And then we saw that happen. I also went to the refuge director and said, hey, um, I think it was Cynthia at that point in time? Sharon. Sharon. Sharon McKelvey. McKelvey. We said, well, the way you're doing up there, uh, you're going to create a potential for a flood. And I think it was less than two weeks after the new uh, channels were put in, we had a flood. And the flood wiped out the ingress and egress of the road out here. It sent a wall of water and mud through the camp. And um, it wasn't that it was that hard to forecast. We saw what they did. They did it completely uh, bass backward, you might say. They didn't have any permits, didn't have a review through the Army Corps of Engineers, through the EPA. They didn't have it gone through FEMA. It was just bootleg through. And had private individuals done what they did, or private business, they'd be looking at serious fines and very possibly quite a lengthy jail term. But I'm out here just as a person to give some historical perspective on it. I've seen this piece of ground for the last 22 years. I know a little bit about the case. I applaud all of you for wanting to participate in it and help support even the greater mission, and that's against the government that wants, wants too much, takes too much, and gives back too little. So I was very blessed to be here, folks, and thank you for listening to me paddle on and on and on. Yeah.